What's good, man? Thanks for thanks for the support. I'm trying to figure out what's going on in your mind as an adult, as an adult millionaire that make you. In the midst of a game, I understand. You get heated. You're protecting your teammates. It's going down on the field, and, and everybody is in the thick of things. I get it. But Leonard Fortnite has been injured most of the season. And this jackass, Sluggo, what's good, man? Thanks, brother. Thanks for the support. This jackass runs across the field and jumps in a fight after being hurt most of the year. Now, in a basketball game, I could, I could damn near see it. In a baseball game, I could damn near see it. It makes it makes. It. But what the hell are you going to accomplish by punching a dude with a football helmet in his head? Besides breaking your hand and potentially ruining your career, because if your hand get broken the wrong way, anything happens the wrong way, you could potentially damage nerves and things like that. Thanks, thanks, brother, thanks. So why is he running across the field fighting? What's going on in your head that make you run 56 and one quarter yards? Because that's how wide the football field is. To the end zone and start a fight. And then you carry this foolishness on down the, uh, down the, uh, uh, lock to the locker room and all that. At some point, man, we got to be a whole lot smarter than that. Because what's good, Bama? Because it's just a bad look for him. It's a bad look for us. It's a bad look for young people watching him. Because at the end of the day, what you're going to hear a lot of these dudes on these TV networks go is that he was protecting his friend and this, that, and the third. And that's just some bullshit. You ain't protecting anything, man. You just end up looking like a millionaire jackass. You're looking exactly the way uh, 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 they want you to look. To embarrass you and embarrass your fucking family and things of that nature. The shit is just crazy, man. I don't get it. I'm trying to just look past it. At some point, we gonna wake the hell up. I assume and stop doing dumb shit. It's just uh, I don't get it, man. I really don't get it. Then before that, you get the jackass of the week award, man. What's good, Mo? What's good, man? Thanks for the support as usual, brother. Thanks. I'm just, I just don't understand why you as an adult would run across the football field and say, hey man, I think it's time for me to start a fight with somebody. Or participate in the fight. Look, it's pushing the shove. It ain't even a real fight. So are you really supporting your brothers or whatever nonsense y'all popping off about this bullshit? No, you're not, man. It's just, it's crazy. And Leonard Fernandez, you look like a damn fool. And speaking of damn fools, I'm forced to look at another dude who might be the damn fool of the decade, and he goes by the name of Ruben Foster. And I don't even know if I want to call him the damn fool of the decade, but this is a gigantic uh, uh, example of why, this is a gigantic example of why at some point we're going to have to start sending our young people to institutes like HBCUs. And I know that might be an extreme proclamation, but the reason I'm making the proclamation is this. I remember when, uh, I remember when this kid, AP, gotta be a fool, uh, gotta be the fool who come for the conversation. So, exactly. Adrian Peterson, I spoke about Adrian Peterson Saturday. Adrian Peterson, well, I'm going to talk about that in a second again. I'm looking at a situation to where as this dude, uh, Reuben Foster, I'm starting to actually question the fact that if this dude might need actual help. And why I say that is this. Reuben Foster got in trouble from domestic violence at Hello. He was at on campus. He was getting into domestic situations on campus. And after he was getting into domestic situations on campus, he turns around and it's not good enough to be in a situation on campus. So what Ruben Foster does is double down on the damn foolery. And he in essence gets in trouble at a job interview. This dude gets in trouble trying to fight a nurse 
at the NFL Combine. And they overlooked that. And after they overlooked that, what does Ruben do? The first chance he gets, Ruben gets into a situation with the 49ers and then the girl recants and now he's in trouble all over again. And the reason I the reason I mentioned the fact that hey, maybe we need to start directing our young people to our institutions because I remember when Ruben was getting drafted, Nick Saban said, well, he's not a quiet boy. This lets me know that Ruben Foster was already identified as a problem. And if he was identified as a problem three years ago or four years ago when he was at the university, someone, somehow, someway should have offered this young man some assistance, some mental assistance. For the guys who just started listening to my show, I've referenced on several occasions how... Uh, how uh, um, in my community I may even be suffering from PTSD from uh, at some extent uh, one of the stories I always tell is how me and some of my friends and Shaka can attest to this because me and Shaka we found out we from the same we, we, he used to be in my neighborhood a lot there was this restaurant called Sammy's and you really didn't want to go to Sammy's after dark because if you went to Sammy's after dark, it was a great chance your life would be in danger. And me and some of my friends, we would make the statement, let me go, let's go to Sammy's before they start shooting. When you are living in an environment like that, some of us walk through it and it doesn't bother us. It, it, we walk right through it, it you know, it, it, we're normal to a certain extent. But there are other people like Ruben Foster, and other young men who are prone to violence and prone to not use the better judgment, use better judgment, they need some assistance. They need some counseling. If you're at the University of Alabama, they have to have some facilities so you can get some counseling. Not just putting these young men in a situation so, hey, hey, we're going to help your son get to the NFL. No, you need to be trying to help their sons and these, these people's sons and daughters be better people. Because... I can, you know, I'm not going to, of course, I'm not going to say any names, but I've been in situations to where as I know there were rape cover-ups. I know there were other legal infractions cover, infraction cover-ups. So, for somebody to act as if, hey man, oh, this is just something unique, it's not unique. And people like Nick Sabans to say he's not a choir boy, you knew this dude had issues. And you still unleash them onto the world, cause as the as the say as the saying goes, money doesn't change you. It magnifies what who and what you really are. So if Ruben Foster's acting a damn fool, and, and what you do is reward him with four million dollars, that means whatever he was doing was okay, or it means shit they gonna get me out of it anyway, cause I'm a good football player, and that's just not what we need in our community at this point. So we can feel sorry for Ruben Foster, which I do, but I'm more angry with the likes of a Nick Saban and these other coaches who, like we found out at Michigan State, turning turning young men on to uh, uh, turning young men on out into the street after rape allegations and things of that nature, unleashing these young men on, on to the general public, further pushing forward a narrative exactly conditioned to the madness further pushing a forward a narrative, a narrative that me, you, and all the men and brothers that's listening and me, black men worldwide that we're just, what's up Nikisi, what's good man? That we are just prone to violence, prone, we're, we're, we're animalistic and things of that nature. So at some point we are going to have to start recruiting for our people and putting our people in better situations because I'm tired. We don't need any more Ruben Fosters. We need way more Deshaun Watson's. We need way more uh, uh, LeGarrette Blunts. I mean, I'm not LeGarrette Blunts. Uh, uh, what's my man name who went to Florida State who buying houses? He actually bought Deshaun Watson's A house and Deshaun Watson continued it right now. War done. That's the dude I'm talking about. And it's just, man. It's, it's annoying And since I'm on this social justice kick I was going to talk about it later on in the show I know everybody thought about Eric Reed And he's being over tested I don't give a damn about Eric Reed being over tested Because Eric Reed being What's up L what's good man 
Eric Reed being over tested, they're, they're bigger fish to fry, man. And yeah, is he being picked on? Hell yeah, you being picked on. You sued the league. They let you back in, so shut the hell up and play unless they do something to you egregious. War done. Exactly. Thanks, greatest. Uh, but when I'm looking at this, this is why Colin Kaepernick, if for anybody who's listening or anybody has any questions why Kaepernick picked this fight with the NFL, here's the reason Colin Kaepernick picked the fight with the NFL. The reason he picked the fight with the NFL is because people like Cindy, uh, Congressperson Sidney Hegman. Sidney Hegman was, is a uh, Congressperson, a United States Congressperson. This is the same lady. If you don't know who this woman is, this is the lady who said she's open to go to public hangings. Now, they ain't hanging dogs. They ain't hanging cats. They ain't hanging Jews. They're not hanging Latinos. They're hanging niggas. And I'm sorry if y'all uncomfortable with the word nigga, but I'm so fucking what? They hanging niggas. And that's what you mean, and there's no way around it. They, they weren't hanging nobody else in this damn country but black folks. So if you comfortable seeing one of us strung up by a tree, I got a problem with that. But I really don't have a problem with this lady because I expect that from people. I expect some of the most vile behavior and vile things ever said coming out of people's mouths because this dude who in charge of the country is a microcosm of what the country represents. I don't give a damn what you say because if you win a, 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 an election that's a, allegedly good versus evil, 51 to 49, that means 49% of the people are against what you're talking about. That's just the facts. Now, back to this woman. This woman steps out and says that, and then the truth comes out. Major League Baseball has donated money to her campaign. Uh, and and my whole Major League Baseball. In a, in a, let me let me check this out. I got somebody in the chat. NFL owners are one of many racist business uh, owners in America. Facts. Shout out to Big L for that, man. No no bullshit. Shout out to Big. I'm gonna send right there, man. But you know what, Big L, Chief Rocker, what's up, man? It's bigger than that, Big L. This is what I'm talking about. MLB donated to her uh, uh, campaign. According to MLB, they had no idea who she was, and let's just say we're going to take their word at it. Okay, now, what their explanation was, is Tiffany in the group, sorry Tiffany, I didn't acknowledge you. Hey Tiffany, uh, if I didn't acknowledge you, I apologize. They said that they just blindly donate to both sides of the aisle in hopes to gain a foothold for lobbyists. Now, I'm going to take them at their word. They just doing it to get get the foothold on the lobby. So because what people don't know is if you uh if you watch real sports and if you watch uh outside the lines, minor league baseball players are about to sue major league baseball because they are being paid at the rate less than a McDonald's worker. Minor league baseball players, professional athletes, they get paid less than McDonald's workers, so they want to get compensated, rightfully compensated compensated for the money that they're generating. And what Major League Baseball is doing is gathering lobbyists so they can stop them, so those antitrust exemptions won't be removed so they won't be screwed over via taxes. So, the reason I'm talking about this, this goes hand in hand with the people who say Kaepernick shouldn't took this to the NFL. He should have just did this on his own time. The NFL had those same, same tax exemptions. NBA had those same tax exemptions. So, if you can take time so you can potentially screw over some broke baseball players and you need Congress to help you do that and you funnel the money to congressmen and congresswomen to help you do that, your ass could have did it when Cap said, hey man, do something about brothers getting shot in the street. So, the, for the people who stand around and say, oh man, this ain't the place for that. This is exactly the place for that. Guess what? If you live in a city where there is a football stadium that is generating hundreds of millions of dollars, every time you go to work, they taking some money out your check to build the next one. If you live in Minnesota, that new stadium, that you help build it. If you live in Atlanta, you help build it. If you live in Dallas, you help build it. You know, it's cool to say, my man, 
uh, uh, who own Home Depot and Jerry Jones, yeah, they might have put a large amount of money up, but they ain't put all the damn money up, man. Oh, it's a $1.5 billion.